right second video on scheduling okay so this one basically before you watch it make sure you're going to be notes on scheduling algorithms you know what the different algorithms actually are and what might be happening to a particular process during the scheduling um, uh, process okay so this video is going to be looking at what the actual process of managing the job queue and priorities is okay so um, what happens to processes when they're in the job queue okay now there are two different kinds of scheduler that we could be looking at here we got high level schedulers and low level schedulers there's actually three we we're going to talk about two to begin with so the high level scheduler actually is involved with getting jobs into the ready queue okay so it will basically um, get them ready okay then uh, because they can be processed okay the low level scheduler will then basically take jobs out of the ready queue and load them into the CPU for processing so there are three states of a job that we need to be thinking about over here all right a job enters the system it gets placed in the queue okay so it's ready to be processed it can then be taken so that was the high level scheduler it can then be moved into the CPU and it can be executed all right once the job is completed it leaves the system at some point some particular jobs might be taken out of the running state and be put back into a waiting state oh sorry into a runnable state because there's something else needs to be processed or something else of a higher priority has arrived sometimes a job can be moved out of the CPU and it goes into a block state that could be because um, it doesn't it's waiting for peripheral it's waiting for data and obviously once that arrives then it can go back into the queue and it's in a ready state ready to be run now um, remember I said there were three types of scheduler so we had the high level scheduler which was takes those jobs that are ready to be run and puts them in the ready queue you have the low level short scheduler which takes the jobs out of the ready queue and actually passes them to the CPU for execution and then you have a medium level scheduler which basically sits um, in the middle and it moves jobs between primary memory and secondary storage okay so uh, remember that high level scheduler is only going to put jobs into the ready queue if the data and peripherals are available okay and then the medium level scheduler is going to take the jobs or the data for the job for out of the secondary storage from the spool queue and move it into um, main memory ready for the CPU now there's a really important word that we want to think about when we're talking about schedulers and that's this phrase over here preempt so if you're um, uh, I forgot what the, the name for it in the X-Men or whatever comic it is uh, if you can preempt something then basically you can predict something is going to happen in the future okay and so you're taking action in advance of that event occurring and that's quite important when we think about scheduling okay so a preemptive scheduler has the ability can do what is on that flashing arrow okay jobs can be taken out of the running state and moved back into the ready state okay and that can be for because the scheduling algorithm has decided that another job needs to be has a higher priority and needs to be processed could be because it is a shorter job because there's a short amount of time remaining it could be because it's a round robin which has now decided that the job is um, more there's a more complex job or another job that now needs to have some CPU time slices allocated to it etc okay another reason though also is that an interrupt has come in of a higher priority of the job that is currently running and so that now needs to be dealt with a non preemptive scheduler basically doesn't have that ability to move jobs out of the running state into the ready queue to allow something else to be um, processed okay so once a job enters the system it goes uh, out of the ready state into the running state and then it leaves the system once um, it has finished being executed okay so you can see that this is the the task is going to come in goes into the CPU and then it will exit and the only time a task goes into the block state is if the sudden the peripheral is not available or the data is not available and then that will allow something else to come in okay so 
what's quite important with a non-preemptive scheduler is that once a job enters the CPU, it is usually run till completion, okay? And nothing else can come in um, during that time, all right? So you should have an idea now of the actual process used to manage job queues. So the roles of the high, medium, and low level schedulers, and then the difference between a preemptive and a non-preemptive scheduler.